Well, I want to go into my scripture for today. I want to continue from where I left off last week on why we should pray. Why we should pray. The first is a quote from the Archbishop that daily prayer is needed for daily survival. May you survive every day whilst you pray. Say amen. The Bible said, give us this day our daily bread. May God, who gives us daily bread for us to survive, may you also pray daily to survive. Number two, prayer is the oxygen that makes you live. It's the oxygen you breathe in to give you life. The Bible says, pray without season. The Bible also says that men always ought to pray and not faint. I pray that your life will not faint. You will not live a day without prayer. Number three, because Satan wants to sift you as wheat. The Bible says in Luke 22, 31, Simon, Simon. Uh, then he says, uh, uh, Simon, 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 Simon said, Behold, Satan hath desired you to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But the Bible says, I have prayed for you. Uh, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So, to sift means to put you in the sieve and shake you until you are separated from, from whatever is attached, that has attached itself to you. So, sometimes the enemy will bring a lot of things into your life just for him to sift you as wheat. But look at the intervention. Jesus said, I have prayed for you. Say amen. Number four, the fourth reason why you must pray is to survive difficult times. Sometimes the Bible said, we, you know, the Bible said that, that, you're, that you may be able, Ephesians 6, 30, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. This is a letter written to uh, the church at Ephesus. It said, take unto the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Sometimes you can go through difficulties and that difficulty is enough to knock you down and not resurrect again. But I thank God that you have strength in God that no matter the difficulties, even look at the life of Job who had so much difficulties, but he survived and the Bible restored unto him twice what he has lost. Anything you have lost, may you receive twice for it. Say amen. And then number... Uh, number what? Number five. What does number five says? That you pray that the Lord will fight your battles, defeat. Because there are. So, David said. David said, the Lord fought for me because my enemies were too strong for me. Say Amen. There are ancient gods. There are ancient spirits. There are. There are demonic entities that were worshipped by your father even before your great-grandfather was born. So when you are battling with some of these ancient spirits, like Psalm 18, 16, and 19, that the Lord himself is a man of war and he must come in and fight the battles. If you look at the armies of Israel, they were too much for the Israelites, but the Lord, a man of war, fought for them. Anybody here who is going through any form of battle, eh, may the Lord step in and fight those battles for you. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. May the Lord intervene where your weaknesses uh, 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 is, where your, where your strength fails, may God intervene for you. Say amen. Today, because of communion service, I wanted to do five, but I want to do about two or three more. And uh, I want to talk about the, the sixth reason why you should pray is to overcome the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. You must pray to overcome the spirit of what? Fear. Look, people, people, become fearful of so many things. You see, your baby umbaya, who be in me, there are some things that can put fear in you. Somebody asked, Reverend Steve, are you ever afraid? Yes, I've been fearful before. 
I remember one time I was watching CNN when a plane took off from is it Dallas or somewhere. Three minutes, the plane came down. That, I don't know what the devil did put in my head. That look, when you are flying, remember, the first three minutes, you can easily come down. During that time, sure, if I'm flying, the first three minutes, and the worst part of it is that my son told me, he told me something, I don't know why he told me that. He said, Daddy, the first danger of every flight is the first three to five minutes. I said, hey, you're right there. First three to five minutes. The pilot telling me that the first three to five minutes is the most dangerous time of a flight. The thing entered my head. So when the plane is taking off, we will not be hope. So everybody has something that puts fear in him. Men young who met you. Acknowledge that this thing puts fear in you. Everybody is afraid of my wife, she's afraid of something. Say amen. What are some of the things people fear in their lives? People fear premature death. You feel, you feel that you will die before your time. It's a fear. People fear of being single. He's not married. And if, he's, if he or she looks at the way he has lived his life, he thinks that, am I going to be single for the rest of my life? It's a fear. Say amen. People fear of being poor for the rest of their lives. He thinks, I don't have money. Does it mean I'm going to be like this for the rest of my life? I don't have money. I'm always poor. I'm always borrowing. Hallelujah. People fear that they will not have children. He's been married for seven years. He hasn't got children. And sometimes the panic that I will be a childless mother. Say amen. It's a fear. Genuine one. People fear of losing what they have. You feel that what you have, I will lose it. People fear. People are afraid of failing. That I will fail in this life. People are afraid that they will be disgraced. People fear that they will be sick and be bedridden. Because he can see that the mother was bedridden. The father was bedridden. So there's a fear in you that you will also be bedridden. People also fear that they will not make it in this life. Friends are making it. Some are traveling. Will I also make it? It's a genuine fear. But the Bible says in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy, I think 1 7. 2 Timothy uh, 1 7. Look at it. It said, For God, everybody say, For God. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but what? Of power and of love. And of a sound mind. So remember, anytime you are entertaining fear, it doesn't come from God. And that is why to overcome that fear, you have to pray and drown the spirit of fear. Say amen. Hey, James, there's a friend of mine here from London. He and his wife, James Pride. Please get up and then let the people know that they're coming all the way from London. My very, very good friends. They invited me to Austria. Is he Austria? Yes, near Austria. All the way some Italian place me. I went there to preach. Yeah, they are very good couple. They have their children. They have three of their children here. Is it three? Yeah, give it up for them. Wow. They arrived yesterday. And we had them picked up from the airport. And this morning they said they want to worship with us. I have my auntie who has been in Germany for auntie, how many years have you been in Germany? Forty years or thirty five forty years. Get up, let my people see you. That you're a beautiful auntie. Forty years in Germany. They are my mother's, is it, are you the last born? The last born, my mommy, they were 13, he's the last born. <laughs> Those days, they have football team and the reserve bench. <laughs> 13, hey, my, mother, my grandmother was strong. My, my grandmother lived up to 100 years. Yeah, there's long life in them. 11 players, two reserves. <laughs> She came last week and she worshiped with us. Say amen. So, fear, remember, fear is a spirit. Remember, fear is a, anything that is a spirit can be defeated. Because what is in you is greater than what is coming against you. So, anytime you are afraid of something, you have to pray to drown that fear. 
Say amen. If you keep quiet, the fear will dominate you. And it will be like what Job said. What I greatly fear has come upon me. So what you are entertaining as a fearful person, if you nurse that fear, it will come upon you. Because your will to fight will be drowned. You always think that you will be single for the rest of your life. You always think that you will die poor. You will be buried ridden. You will not make it. You see, that fear is always in your subconscious. And the enemy will thrive on that fear to bring to pass. So, beloved, if you are fearful of something, you better take hold of the horns of that demonic spirit of fear and fight it until courage comes into you. Say amen. Until you master and give and let the Lord give you courage. Look at Numbers chapter 13. Numbers 13 uh, reading from uh, reading from verse number 27 but before 27 you will see that Moses sent out 12 spies to go and spy out the land of what? Canaan because God had given it to them. Remember, God has already given them the land even before they set out. And the Bible said in verse 27, look at it. And they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And surely it floweth with what? Milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. So they brought fruit, pomegranates, and so many clusters of fruits to show that the land is really fruitful. Hallelujah. And then the Bible said, look at it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Bible said, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb steal the people before Moses, and said, let us go up at once, and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. What was the fate of Caleb? His fate was not what he saw, by his faith is based on the promise that Jehovah gave to him. Your faith should not be what you are experiencing. Your faith should not fail because uh, you are 41, you are not married, you don't have children. Your faith should not be. Your faith should be on what God has said. What God has said. What has God said in your situation? I will bless thee and I will make thee great. So don't think you are going to die poor. With long life will I satisfy thee and I will show you my salvation. So don't, th don't think that you are going to die prematurely. You must always find a scripture that describes your fear and now have faith in that way that what the enemy is showing you. Am I in church? I've gone somewhere. Yeah. So I will not have faith in what you are telling me. If, if 17 men have promised to marry me and they all left, it still will not be enough for me to fear that I'll be single. The right person is coming from Uganda. The right person is coming from Kenya. The right person is coming from Gabon. There is a guy in Paraguay that the Lord will bring to come and marry you. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You will walk this aisle and all your enemies will see it. It shall come to pass. Yeah, there is a guy in Paraguay for you. If the guys in CEA will not propose to you, God is bringing somebody from Uruguay, Paraguay. Gab there is a Gabonese. There is a Uga There is a Kenyan. There is somebody somewhere. There is somebody somewhere. Situation will bring that person to Ghana. Say amen. Am I talking to somebody here? I will not allow the enemy to show me my future. And I will not fear what he is showing me. I will be moved by what the word of God has said concerning my life. Am I talking to somebody here? 
So Caleb still the people. Let us go at once and possess the land. Look at the next verse. For we are well able. Go. For we are well able. For we are well able to overcome it. For we are well able. But the men that went up with them said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Look at the next verse. <laughs> Uh, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched into the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people we saw in it are men of great stature. Hey, and there, there we saw the giant, the sons of Anath, which came of the giant, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were. In their sight, a grasshopper mentality, and fear is the one feeding you with that kind of utterance. Fear is a spirit, and when the enemy wants to destroy you, he will throw first the spirit of fear. And once you succumb to the fear, then he comes in to execute what he has promised to do. That is why a child of God. When in the time of fear, you resort into what? Prayer. That, that is why when you are prayerless, you feed on your fear. I will not be single. I will not die poor. I will not be a childless mother. Say amen. I will not be a beggar. Say amen. When somebody is breaking through, it's an indication that I am next in line. When somebody, any, a friend of yours is breaking through, then when the friend has finished breaking through, or when he's done, you know that you position yourself because you, are, you know that you are next in line for what God is going to do. Hallelujah. Numbers 14. Numbers 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Will God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or will God we had died in this wilderness? Wherefore had the Lord brought us into this land? To fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly, the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that stretched the land. Rent their clothes and speak unto all the company. The children of Israel say, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delighted us, then He will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Neither, he said, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Am I talking to somebody here? Fear them not, for they are bread for us. Your defenses is departed. The thing you are fear, you know, has lost its battle already. Except that you are behaving as if you don't have a God. That is why you should not be entertaining a brother or a sister who will come to your house and all he or she is talking about are the negative things. Uh, the economy is bad. How, how, are you, how old are you now? 52. And yet, forget about marriage. Forget about children. We are serious. Ah. Uh, MPP, NDC, and yes, uh, don't entertain such, such foolishness. Bring somebody who will encourage your faith. Be a friend of somebody 
who doesn't see your plight and rejoice at it, but is waiting to celebrate you that it is well. That's the kind of friend I want. You can come to my house and come and tell me a lot of bad things and all the bad things that are happening to the world. No, it is not my portion. It is not my portion. The people cried and look at the look at the stupid part of the scripture. After being in bondage, Keto, for 430 years, and now you have seen deliverance. God took you at the hand of God. Now that you have a small challenge, you want to go back into bondage. What nonsense. Because of what? Fear. When I was an unbeliever, I tell you, things were better than now. Hey! When you were unbeliever, things were better than now. It means that God has done nothing in your life. Is that what you want to tell me? And let me just go back to my old life because I think my old life was better than because since I've been back to faith, and praying, 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 fasting, fasting, praying, 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 obey and mommy home, me need boyfriend, me need sicker, me need belt, me need shoes, me need nails, me need nails. Hey! Are you going to go back into the world because of nails? Or because of shoes? And belt? You should never wish you were an unbeliever. A friend of mine told me something I will never forget. He said, he said, if there was no heaven, the Christian life is a better life. Yes. If there was no heaven, the Christian life that I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't go around sleeping with people and get gonorrhea and syphilis and get HIV, I don't do whatever. I don't just say I'm a family person. That life itself is better than. So never ever annoy God by saying that I wish I was still an unbeliever. What you are going through is a cleansing process. It's a rejuvenating. God is preparing you. God is removing every Egypt out of your life so that a man's life is not uh, dependent on the abundance of things he possesses. He wants you to be heavily conscious than belt and shoes and painting of nails. I used to have a car. I used to do my hair every every time. Every every year, I to change my hair, and I have my own car. Now, most of you born again. My born again. Papa na begin be pay for me, sir. Now I'm suffering. I think my life was better off. And were you not afraid to say such a thing? Were you not afraid to tell God that your life was better? Look, if you were an unbeliever, they would have buried you by now, because the way your life was going. It was only God that intervened for you. Say amen. David says something in Psalm 27, 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 27, 1, 2, and 3. Look at what David said. A psalm of David, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foe, came up to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should arise eh, against me, in this will I be confident. What will I be confident in? That my God will fight for me and put a praise in my mouth. So don't be afraid of anything that is going to happen. When somebody comes and says, Who this year, we make tell him you are singing a song. 
all the words you have said to me, I return it to the sender. Psalm 46. Psalms 46. 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 46. To the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song of Alam. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in what? In trouble. A very present help in trouble. Look at the next verse. <laughs> Therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. <laughs> next verse. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof he's saying that look can you imagine the mountains is removed and put in the sea it is not for you to panic and fear but they will say none of these things can put fear in me there should be nothing that must make you fear what you should fear is backsliding from God but that's what you should fear what you should fear is something smoking you out of that you don't come to church anymore, you don't worship anymore, you don't pray anymore. That's what you should be afraid of. But not what man can do, not what situation can bring against you. Because I have laid my hands on the plow, and beloved, I am not looking back. I am not looking back. There's no amount of hunger and whatever for that to make me look back. My mother left my father. My father left my mother. I don't know which one is which. My mother left my father. My father left, but they, 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 one, one, one left the other. They separated. Because it, they were, yeah. And our lives were bizarre. It affected everything. Everything came to everything around me was affected. I had uncles. I had aunties who were abroad. They were nobody. Nobody. I made calls. To one of my aunties in London, they take the calls. I went to some of my uncles, they had put an inscription on their door cry your own cry. <laughs> to be the truth, there was no help. My elder brother Charles, is he here in church? I will always thank God for his life. My elder brother Charles came and said to me, there is an all night somewhere. I want to take you. He took me first. When I told Stanley, let's go, he said, oh, I'm not going away. So I went. When I went, Keto, there was jumping, dancing, worshipping. I've never seen, I was brought up as a Catholic. I don't worship like that. And my mass server, Spiritu Santo de la secula seculor. That's, that's what I do. But when I went, they were jumping. Hey, people were so happy. And I wish I could be happy like that. Then the guy came, I still remember it, in Okagoso, wearing Batakari with black trousers, with a white shirt and red tie. Then when he came, he was, he just, he was, he was his hands were shaking. I said, hey, in the big you are. <laughs> I've never said it like that. My priests don't do those things. That's it. Very beautiful. But this guy, okay, lay hands on people. People were tumbling over. Hey! Then he started preaching, jumping. And then he made an altar call. I can't remember how I moved from my seat to the altar call. But before I realized, I was in front of the altar call. And I was in front crying. I said, Lord whatever it is. I don't know. I, I couldn't understand what was going on. So I said, no, help me. So they took me. A certain tiny girl be counseled me. Gave me what you call assurance of salvation. And everything. I listened to her. Then I went to my brother, my child, my brother. He didn't tell me anything. Though. He didn't preach. He didn't say, did you? He didn't ask me anything. The following week he came to me. Will you go to the house? I said, I'm going. I'm, I'm already dressed. I'm going. That was how. Then I told Stanley. I said, you better come. So Stanley also came. When Stanley came and they made what I call, both of us went to receive Christ again. And that was the beginning of our journey with Christ. And since then, I have never looked back. I have never looked back. I used to go to up 
opera house from Monday to Monday. I joined every department, choir, drama, evangelist. I was everywhere. I never went to Bible school. My pastor's teaching was my Bible school. Yeah, my pastor's teaching was my Bible school. I never, never went to Bible school. I've never written Bible school exam before. The work I am doing, I've never been trained to do it. I don't have a certificate say that I've graduated from some seminary. No, I don't have any of those things. It was the grace of God, the oil, the unction, and, and the favor of God that has brought me today that the Lord has carried me to the world. So, I don't know what you have been through. Anything you have been through, I've also been through it. Have you been homeless before? I've been homeless before. I've slept on people's veranda before. I've eaten, I've, I've, I've slept in hunger many times. I've slept in hunger. That is why I can't stand people because I know what it means to sleep in hunger. That is why I made my, a, a vow to feed as many hungry people as possible. I have been homeless before. That is why I am building a home for homeless people. Everything I have been through, I am a champion of it. I have received six awards for looking after four people. The seventh award is going to be done in Washington. So, yeah. The, the International Global Life Achievement Award for Reverend Steve Benson for caring for poor people. What are you talking about? You want to backslide and go back to the world? To go and do what in the world? To go and do what in the world? There is a better life in the kingdom. Don't tell me that your temporary situation is going to make you backslide. Say amen. Say hallelujah. The Bible said in Romans chapter 8, 15, 16 and 17. Romans chapter 8, 15. He says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Look at the next verse. Huh. The spirit is a better witness with our spirit that we are what? The children of God. Next verse. And if children, then we are heirs of God. Then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. There is a day of glorification. Your day of glory is coming. Me, I'm sitting my somewhere. I received a call from Washington. He said, are you Reverend Steve Mensah? I said, I'm Reverend Steve Mensah. Washington. The White House is awarding you International Life Achievement Award. And there's the money behind it. There's some money behind it. I will assess that money. <laughs> because I want to start my village this year. I am building the village this year. Yeah. Global. I'll be on CNN and everything. Some billionaire will locate me. Helen, a billionaire somewhere who has money put will locate me and say, I will invest in your project. As I'm standing here by the grace of God, I don't need anything. I don't need shoes. I don't need, I don't need anything. I want to build a home for the homeless and feed hungry people. Because I've been hungry before and I've been homeless before. And I know what it means to sleep and wake up not knowing what you are going to eat that day. I've been there before. My mother was sleeping with her sisters. When I went and saw my mother's condition, whether it will only take God. And today, say amen. So don't tell me that you are going to feed your fears and go back. For my God is able to supply all your needs according to his glory. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Number seven. I think I will do two today. Pray to come out of bewitchment. Pray to come out of what? Bewitchment. Look at the scripture. Galatians chapter 3. It's going to be a little bumpy at this scripture. It's going to be what? 
a little bumpy with this verse. Look at it. Oh foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only will I learn from you. Receive ye the spirit with the, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Hallelujah. I checked on the word bewitchment or to be witched. This is what I discovered. To be bewitched means to cast a spell. Say amen. If somebody casts a spell on you, he has tried to bewitch you. To be held in captive. To enchant someone. To be controlled. Dominated. Say amen. To be seduced. To be possessed with charm. To be mesmerized. Hypnotized. And transfixed. Say amen. Somebody can be with you. A job can be with you. A man or a woman can be with you. you can, your life can be dominated and controlled by someone. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. You can be influenced. There is only one cure to bewitchment. Prayer. Because a man can bewitch a woman. Such a way that a woman na wuye na o de she sa boy. O da dem o nye a woman o she TV na ufi a woman ba na fe we dufu dufu and then up your way up your watch up your mobile phone and you are the one wake it's bewitchment am I talking to somebody, somebody yeah. doesn't work any guy who doesn't work by is sucking your money eh, he has bewitched you come out of the bewitchment Any girl or lady who controls you. That's a way that you don't feel like going to your matrimonial home. You feel like staying with her in the hall where she is staying. And she commands you and sends you text messages. You are in an executive meeting. You will leave the meeting and go to this girl. It's a bewitchment. Why is that color? And you are tossed to and fro. Or to be frail. I want to, um, I want some fried rice with uh, some fried plantain and fried egg with fried yam. And I want us now. Udi America. Udi America is bewitchment. The girl has cast a spell on you. Say amen. You can't control yourself. Anytime you meet her, you sleep with her. Anytime. It's a spirit. It's a bewitchment. You can't free yourself. You can't do anything. When you look at your wife and your children, he controls your money. Maybe you want to take your children for holidays. He said, I'm going to go holidays. I'm going to go holidays. The girl is saying, I'm going to go holidays. Oh, you call Dubai. Eh? How many days? Oh, two weeks. So what will I be doing for that two weeks? Well, so what will I be doing? You will be with your wife enjoying. And I'm here. Don't go anywhere. What do you take me for? And I have needs. Who do you go Dubai? Because Dubai. Who Dubai? Now, 
It's an enchantment. It's possession. It's transfixed. It's bewitchment. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Who, are, who is controlling you? This year, you are breaking the spirit of bewitchment. You are coming out of it. You have neglected your family, neglected the children because of this particular lady. This particular guy. Your, your, your wife and children are suffering, but this girl doesn't suffer anything. It's a bewitchment. You don't love your wife anymore. You don't sleep in the bedroom anymore. You sleep on the couch. One of my children in this church, the guy sleep, slept on the couch for six months. He said, and guess what? There was another girl somewhere, whatever, and the, and, and the, and the, girl, the girl came and said, Daddy, I did it because I know the way you love us. I know the way when you see me and a husband, the way you talk. I couldn't tell you that. Six months, my husband was sleeping on the floor. And he would go and not come back. He would go for to say he's going to a trek. Two days, three days. Then it was discovered that a shopkeeper somewhere has bewitched this, my son. He has a child with you. He ate something he wasn't supposed to eat. He went and squeezed something he wasn't supposed to squeeze. It's called bewitchment. You can have a friend, you a male, you can have a male friend, and that male friend is controlling your finances. You can have a church, and the church is controlling you. Any church that controls your life is a bewitched church that is casting a spell on you. Remove your shoes. Stand here. Go around. Whatever. Don't do this. It's a bitch. The, a pastor can bewitch you. A pastor can hypnotize you. Some of you come to this church, but you have other churches you go to. And sometimes you can be bewitched by those churches. Because you want a fast track money. I said it's, it's going to be a little bumpy here. Sometimes when you are traveling on the road, smooth road, <laughs> and you get to the, you can get some portals and be bumpy. This is the bumpy part. But having finished, I'm going deeper. I want to break the spell of bewitchment. Having begun in the spirit, are you now perfected in the flesh? This is Paul writing to the church at Galatia. Who has been well? They began well. But here you are, perfected in the flesh because of bewitchment. Bewitchment by a pastor. Then the pastor will control you. It is only a bewitched lady who can go to a church and the pastor can strip you naked and bath you in front of the church. Something has covered your face. A spell has been cast upon you. You can't think right. It is only a bewitchment that can make you carry all your money and go and give to the pastor. It's bewitchment. Give your car, give your house. Give. It is only a bewitched person that can come and say, "Me pastor see me ja we a pay for ba." People have divorced their wives because they were bewitched by another person. Am I in church? I've gone somewhere. Let me show you a scripture. In the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 5. Verse 1. My son. Now, this scripture, even though it is uh, one sex dom dominated, it is neuter gender. It means it can apply for both men and women. My son, so he can also be my daughter. Attend unto my wisdom and, and, and bow thy ear to my understanding that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips, listen oh, for the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Oil is already smooth. If the lips of a woman is smoother than oil, then there is a spirit of bewitchment in this lady. 
oil is already look at look at the viscosity of oil and they said that a woman's lips a strange woman's lips is smoother than oil ask somebody are you a strange man or a strange woman you have left church and you are into a relationship with somebody whose lips is smoother than oil I say it's a little, don't be a little bumpy here. I'm going, should I go deeper? Say amen. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two edged sword. Sharp. Her tongue is sharp. His tongue, you see, is both ways. His tongue or her tongue is sharper than two edged sword. Her feet go down to death. If her feet go down, it means you are going to die with it. Going to die with it. Say amen. Her steps take the hold on hell. Least thou should ponder the path of life. Her ways are moveable that thou canst not know them. Am I talking to somebody here? Hear me now, therefore, ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her. And come not nigh the door of a house, lest thou give thy honor unto others. The honor that God has given to you, you give it to others. You sell your birthright and sell your heritage because of a guy, because of a lady, because of a strange person, because of bewitchment. I know a certain gentleman. It's a true story. Married to a very beautiful woman had a friend, not a female male friend. This guy, we don't know what the guy did to this man. Took this guy out of church. Joined a certain company. He has four or five beautiful children. Does he want to know? Does he want to see them? Whatever this guy says is what he does. Don't pay their school fees. They are wasting your money. Don't send them abroad. Yeah, I waste the money. Don't give the woman. The woman is a witch. This guy became attached to this other guy. His friend neglected totally his, his family. And it is only what the guy says is what this guy follows. If it is not witchcraft and bewitchment, what is it? So I met with the guy because the wife came to complain. I said, why? What is wrong with you? Reverend, first now I was blind, but now I can see. My family are witches. My wife is the chief witch. And they are the ones who are destroying me. And this guy has helped me to open my eyes. It's bewitchment. It's only, it's only when you are that you can talk that way. So, yeah, be careful who you associate yourself with. What you are doing in your house. The rage, the anger, the refusal to do anything for your family. What is influencing you? What church have, are you attending secretly that the church only starts at 1 a.m.? And you remove your shoes before you enter the auditorium. I used to have an auntie here. Pastor and I know that. This auntie used to go to a certain church. And, and the church, you know, you only wear white. And when you enter the, the, the auditorium, you have to remove your shoes. And this, my auntie, you know, hey, she doesn't do anything except this pastor has spoken. He has a big picture of this pastor in the house. And she'll be talking to the picture in, in, the, in the middle of the night. And he used to carry myself a pastor to follow her. And we wear, we wear white. And there is, a, there is a long, I thought we were about 10 years or so, there is a long trail. It was at Methodist. And then we'll be in the queue. And when you go, the whole place is white. The guy himself is white, has a, has a white hair, white beard, eh? white hair, white beard, and red beret and, and, and he doesn't open his eyes 
he, 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 when you go to, you see that he has done his hand like this. That's all. And then you go and you put his uh, left hand on you. Eh? And you'll be waving his two hands. Ha, him, ha, him, ha, him, ha. And people will be going. People, it's a long trail. You, you, you crawl from the entrance there with your white to him. And we'll be going. So me and Pastor I was the one lady. Pastor was following. <laughs> yeah. He's supposed to be working miracles, whatever. He has bewitched the whole congregation. All of them were bewitched. A spell was cast on them, just like Simon or the sorcerer. And we're all going. We're all going. Ha, he, ha, he, ha, he. He starts at also. Ha. Oh, 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 my mind. Oh, I will show you something. Some, somebody can do that. Come and do that. <laughs> do that. Then this guy. Ha. He. Ha. He. Ha. He. Then you go away. Ha. He. He. Ha. He. Ha. He. Ha. He. Ha, he. Then the next person. Ha. He. Ha. He. The whole night. There's no preaching. Though. It's just ha. He. Ha. He. People are receiving miracles. It's, it's a bewitchment. And every, every member has his picture in his house. And my auntie will wake up at 2 a.m. and be talking to the picture. And anything my auntie has to do, he has to consult this, this guy. Be careful. God has brought you to a beautiful church. Test the spirit here, whether it is of God. If it's not of God, then leave. But if it's of God, then stay. Don't go and mix the oil. Test the spirit where you are. The Bible said, test every spirit. Check whether we are preaching the gospel. Check the behavior. Check what we do. Our things. Check whether it is Bible. The church in Berea, after they have been preached, they will go and set the scriptures to, to, to find out whether what Paul was preaching was the truth. But you don't live here and go and join some unknown church. Strange church with a strange woman. Go and remove your shoes. You are being bewitched. You are being contaminated. Just said the God here, the God here is not enough for you. You want another God from somewhere. That is where you contaminate and you are bewitched. Am I in church? Let strangers be filled with thy wealth. Strangers will be filled with thy wealth. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. At the last. They will finish you down like the way something was finished. And say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof and have, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor incline my ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation of the assembly. Say amen. How have I hated instructions? So people, I have come to tell somebody, beware of being bewitched. Beware of who is controlling you. Beware of somebody, somebody dominating you. When you get your salary, you have to give half of the salary to someone. You are compelled to give half of your pay. May prayer remove you from bewitchment. God bless you and I love you all.